What's going on guys? Today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the boot mode stage one tune on the B58 engine. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to be talking about the first generation of the B58 engine, not the B58TU, since my experience is with this 2018 340i xDrive. I'm going to tell you everything you need to buy to tune your car with boot mode, along with how to prep your car for the tune. Uh, I'm going to tell you what kind of performance numbers you can expect. I'm going to give you performance data, such as like 0 to 60 and a lot of driving clips. And then I'm also going to give you my like personal review of the tune, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, because I do have some complaints on it. Other than that, I'm also going to talk about how this might affect your warranty, how it might affect your reliability. And then uh, where do you go after stage one? Like what comes next? I'm going to start by talking about what you need to buy to flash stage one. But first, I need to mention something very important. It has to do with the BMW dealer and software updates on your car. Unfortunately, if you have an F3340i that has had the software updated recently by BMW, your DME might be locked in a way that will require a bench unlock to use boot mode or any other flash tune. If you don't know what a bench unlock is, basically it means you got to pull your DME out to flash it versus just going through the OBD port. I've seen several posts in Facebook groups and on Beamer Post where someone flashed their car to stock and locked the DME for a dealer visit. And after the visit, they tried to unlock the DME and reflash boot mode or whatever tune they were using. But the flash would fail and then the car would refuse to go back to the stock tune or any boot mode map and the car wouldn't turn on anymore until Pro Tuning Freaks resolved the issue for them. My car did not have the latest uh, software update, so I had no issues at all flashing with boot mode. If you're not sure whether your car has this software update, I'd email Pro Tuning Freaks support or any other vendor that sells boot mode and ask them about it. But hopefully this issue is resolved sometime in the near future and this part of my video becomes irrelevant. To tune your car with boot mode, you need a license and something that will connect either your computer, smartphone, or tablet to the OBD port in your car. A license can be purchased from the Pro Tuning Freaks website for $595 plus an additional $50 for the OTS map pack that will give you all the OTS maps versus having to purchase each one individually. By the way, OTS stands for off the shelf. These are just generic maps that you can quickly flash on your car. The alternative to an OTS map is a custom tune, which is more expensive, but as the name suggests, it is custom made for your car, which often involves many revisions to get it dialed in, but after that, it's going to be way better than an OTS map. After you got the license, you just need a laptop, smartphone, or tablet, and a way to connect that device to your OBD port. I've used my MacBook with Enet cable and Enet USB adapter, and I've also used my iPhone with Enet cable and lightning port adapter, but it can also be done with a Bluetooth adapter, so just go with whatever option is most convenient for you. Now let's talk about what supporting mods are required to run boot mode stage 1. The answer is nothing. My previous car was an F3335i, and that required an aluminum charge pipe upgrade because the OEM plastic charge pipe would crack from high boost pressure. The B58 still uses a plastic charge pipe, but the intercooler is now mounted on top of the engine versus in front of the engine. And from what I've read, this means it won't crack from basic tunes because the charge pipe doesn't flex by having one end connected to a moving piece, which is the engine, and the other end connected to a non-moving piece, the intercooler like it was on the N55 and other engines that had the charge pipe cracking issues. I'll link an article from bmwtuning.com that explains it better than I just did, but for now, uh, don't worry about supporting mods when going stage one. Now that you got everything you need, let's talk about how you can prepare your car for tuning. I'd start by fixing any issues the car has. This means leaks, weird noises, weird smells, definitely check engine light or other codes. You don't want to tune your car while it's already having issues and then just hope that nothing gets worse. Other than fixing issues, uh, do all your maintenance. I bought my car with 12,000 miles, so there wasn't much maintenance to do yet, although I did just change my oil and air filter, but 
For you, this might also include like brake pads and tires if they're worn out, maybe spark plugs and coils if they haven't been done in a while. And for stage one, you can just use OEM spark plug setup. Another thing you can do to be extra careful is data log the car before and after you flash the OTS map. Uh, I didn't do this yet and my car runs fine, but I will be data logging it soon. I'd like to get in the habit of doing it at least once a month to make sure everything is functioning correctly. So how much power am I making with just a stage one tune? I never actually dynoed the car, so the next best thing is to use this reference from the Pro Tuning Freaks website to calculate my power numbers. Premium fuel in my area only goes up to 92 octane, which means I'm stuck running the 91 octane map instead of the 93. Assuming the car has 320 horsepower and 332 foot-pounds of torque to the crank stock, that would put my stage one numbers at about 378 horsepower and 418 torque to the crank and slightly higher when you install a downpipe. That's a very noticeable increase over stock, especially the torque number. Two big competing flash tunes are MHD and MG Flasher. I don't know their exact power numbers for stage one, but I'd, ma I'd imagine they're very similar to the boot mode OTS stage one numbers. People are always asking me which tune is better, MHD or boot mode, and I think you're making a great choice no matter which one you decide to go with. And I don't know too much about MG Flasher, but I'd bet that it's also a solid tune since it's also a cloud-based flash tune and not a piggyback tune. And if you don't know the difference between flash tunes and piggyback tunes, I made a video a long time ago comparing the differences. I will link that. Let's go over the 0 to 60 times now. My car is X-Drive, so although it might not corner the way a rear wheel drive one does, off the line this thing is amazing. I have three different times to show you guys. My stock 0 to 60, my stage one with OEM downpipe 0 to 60, and my stage one with VRSF high flow catted downpipe 0 to 60. measure the times and get the cool interface, I use the Draggy device, a link in the description if you're interested in getting one. I also have a video tutorial on it. But those are some solid times and that is why I love the B58 engine so much. And I'm sure some of you who actually go to the drag strip and really know how to launch a car can probably even get better times than I did on stage one. Another thing to note is I still haven't tuned the transmission but I plan on getting the XHP transmission flash, which uh, I've heard great things about. But overall, this car pulls really hard. I've driven a few F80 M3s, and although this car is way more tame than the M3, it doesn't handle nearly as well as the M3, and it definitely doesn't look as mean as the M3, the acceleration on stage one tuned 340i matches the F80 acceleration up to a certain RPM. Unfortunately, the 340i, even with the tune, does not pull all the way to redline the way a true M car does. I'd need a turbo upgrade for that. But since I have X drive, uh, I'm pretty confident I'd beat a stock F80 or F82 0 to 60. And that is not something I could have said about my uh, 335i when it was stage one. Let's talk about how it drives overall now. This is the only car I own, so it is my daily driver, which means I spend a lot of time doing city driving, highway driving, and unfortunately a lot of time in traffic too. So how does stage one feel when you're just daily driving the car? The best way I can describe it is that it's almost more comfortable to drive than stock. 
And the reason I say almost is because overall, uh, the car's acceleration actually feels more smooth to me than stock, except at a certain point. And that is after about 2000 RPM, there's a little jolt where it goes from normal acceleration to very aggressive in an instant. And I have seen complaints about this in the forums along with Facebook groups. That's the only thing about this map that really needs some revision. That sudden spike in power at low RPM shouldn't be there. And because of that, I'd rate this map a 7 out of 10 instead of giving it like a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. I actually didn't realize initially how bad this issue really was until I drove a G22 440i at the BMW Autocross event. Quick brakes, quick brakes, off the brakes and go. The 440i has a B58TU engine and the acceleration on that car seemed much more linear than my stage 1 F3340i. Although I will say the mid-range torque on the F3340i did feel stronger than the stock G22. But is this issue so bad that you can't daily the car? No, definitely not. I drove it like this for a few months and it was fine. Uh, I just came to expect that jump in acceleration. And fortunately there is a way to mostly get rid of the issue, and that is by installing an aftermarket downpipe. I went with the VRSF high flow catted downpipe, and it did help make that low end acceleration stronger, which helped smooth the power band out. One thing I'd like to mention about the driving experience is that if your car is like mine, and it doesn't have the good M Sport brakes, and also doesn't have good performance tires, you might end up losing traction a lot and uh, also overheating your brakes when hitting the back roads hard. I've passed the limits on my tires and overheated my brakes to the point where I had to stop because the car would start shaking when I would slow down. At this point, I will ask that you hit like and subscribe if this has been useful so far and also go check out the Instagram and check out the cool product links I have in the description of this video. Let's talk about reliability now. You see me beating on my car a lot, but I always make sure to properly warm it up before I do aggressive driving and I'm always on top of my maintenance. I never ignore error codes or weird smells. I take care of every issue immediately. I've been running boot mode on this car for a few months and my old 335i has been running it for nearly two years. Neither cars have had any issues because of the tune. Now in the long run I'm sure the extra stress you get from running higher boost will wear some components out quicker but overall I think boot mode is very safe and reliable and the B58 engine can definitely handle way more power than what it comes with stock. I'd be more worried about the drivetrain components than the powertrain. My best advice is don't buy a German car if your repair and maintenance budget only allows for a Toyota Corolla. And make sure you take advantage of the data logging features that come with boot mode so that way you can detect problems early. Now let's talk about warranty really quick. My car is a 2018 and has just under 20,000 miles on it. This means I have plenty of warranty left. Do I completely lose that warranty now that my car is tuned? Well, not exactly. If the car starts to have issues and the dealer determines that it was caused by your mod, then your warranty claim will be denied. And if the issue was not caused by the mods, then they will still have to fix it. But hopefully your service advisor is super chill and doesn't start blaming common B58 issues on uh, the modifications that you did. And I'm sure some of you are wondering if the dealer will know whether or not you tune the car if you just flash it back to stock and uh, lock the DME. The answer is yes, they will figure it out if they really want to. And according to some posts I saw in the BMW forums, the latest version of ISTA, which is the BMW diagnostic software, can even sniff out your tune automatically and flag your car with an engine tampering code. Uh, and yes, this applies to piggyback tunes also, 
people who say that piggyback tunes can't be detected are unfortunately wrong. So budget appropriately and accept the risks if you plan on modifying your German car. So what's next for my car? Well, uh, here's the path that I have in mind right now. Lots of data logging. Switch to stage two. XHP transmission flash. Uh, continue messing with my exhaust setup. Right now I have the Valvetronic muffler, VRSF high flow downpipe, and OEM resonated midpipe. And I would rate this setup a six out of 10 in terms of the sound, which means it needs some work. <laughs> Get better tires and do some kind of brake upgrade even if it's just better pads. Get either the B58 TU fuel pump or a Dorch Stage 1 or Stage 2 fuel pump for way more money. Do more data logging. Run the Stage 2 Plus OTS map. Run some E30 maps. Even more data logging. Suspension upgrades. Turbo upgrade plus a custom tune. And of course more data logging. And I do plan on documenting every step of this process. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Give me a like. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Go check out the Instagram, nw.auto. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Because I have a lot more planned.